Welcome everybody to week two of our PA Virtual Winter Camp 2020. We hope that you are having an amazing winter break and that you're staying safe and you're staying warm. But I want to really welcome you to our second week. If you're watching this live, awesome. If you're watching this way on down the line, because you're watching the recordings that we have on YouTube, that's fine too. So happy you could join us. And just a reminder, we did do three videos last week. They are up on YouTube right now. So if you want to get caught up on how to make your own snow globe or how to make some pom-pom garland or re-see the storytelling from the Pittsburgh Ballet of the Nutcracker, you could do that. Just click right below. You'll see it right in our playlist. But today, what we're going to do is be making art using picture frames that we are recycling and making a stained picture. So kind of like the stained glass that you would see in uh, some of the older buildings, which is gonna be really, really cool. And some of the materials that you will need and Ms. Shaka, who is one of our principals here, is gonna go over this in the video as well. You wanna make sure that you have a picture frame that is uh, recycled. You wanna be able to have some sort of uh, picture or stencil, something like that, that you want to draw. And then there's going to be um, glass paint that you can get. And there is uh, links below where you can get it from Amazon, but pretty much any art store will have it. Some dollar stores even have some of this paint as well. So it should be a whole lot of fun. Um, I've seen this before and let me tell you, it's an amazing craft to do. So without further ado, Ms. Shaka, take it away. I am so excited to be here and to show you guys how to do this activity. Um, and this is, especially right now during the winter time, these make great presents um, or different things you can do even if you're bored. Uh, what I'm gonna show you guys is, this is what some of the finished products are going to look like when we're done. So this is an example of one that I did here. You guys can see here, it is done with uh, transparent glass paints. And then afterwards, I kind of decorated the glass on top of it so you get that textured feel to it. Um, I use a lot of recycled frames. Um, so if you guys have some old frames laying around, maybe something you guys switched out of, um, it doesn't really matter. What we're gonna do is we're really just gonna use the glass within the frame and this is a safe way to use the glass without getting uh, your fingers uh, hurt in any way. Because of course we don't want you guys cutting your fingers on the glass or anything. So please use a frame when you're doing this. Don't use the glass without the frame. Uh, this is another example of one. This is using a different type of glass paint. This is uh, more of a moon or a prism paint. Um, and I'm going to show you guys how we set everything up so that you can make your own art project. So the first thing you guys are going to need is, like I said, the frame. Um, so you can, you can use any frame you have, any size, depending on what you're trying to accomplish. Um, once you have your frame, think about what kind of, what picture, um, what kind of art you want in the background. I like to use a lot of uh, different kinds of art books. So I get these glass art books that I use from time to time. Uh, you can find them on Amazon. Um, sometimes you can find them at libraries or recycled. Uh, and the, the pages themselves are transparent. So you can actually either, you know, use those based on size if that's something you're interested in. Uh, there's a lot of different decorations and designs. Uh, another thing is sometimes I will get pictures of things that I, that I like or different designs I want to use uh, and I'll print them out. Sometimes I'll use them and I'll expand, or if you're an artist and you really enjoy drawing, maybe you wanna draw your own to start with to fit the frame that you have in mind. Once you have that set up, you will open up the frame and you will insert the paper in the background. So that's what I did here. So I have this frame here ready to go, where I inserted the, the all I did is I opened it up, I put the paper in the background, closed it back up again. Um, and so I'm, the first step, once you have your picture in the frame, is going to be to, to line your artwork. And so in order to line your artwork, there are different types of liners you can use. I like to use this one. There's two different kinds that I primarily use. Uh, one, one gives you a thicker line and one gives you a thinner line. So if you like to, so if you have like more delicate things that you want to draw or work with, you're going to want one of these here that is a, a thinner liner. And you're going to see the difference here in the cap size. You can really see um, how this one's a lot thinner when you open it up. You guys can see how that's a lot thinner versus this one here. If I want to make larger strokes or line on a larger amount, so you can see really the difference of size there. So depending on which one you want, both of these are available on Amazon. They're pretty 
pretty easy to get a hold of. Uh, these come in different colors, which if you like to decorate the background, uh, that's something you can do. So I have a bunch of different colors here that I like because I like to give a uh, feeling to the background afterwards so I can use it with uh, different colors over time. They, have, they, they, they come in all different colors, which is really cool. Um, so we'll get started now with the first step, which is lining our picture. So I'm going to go ahead and bring this down here so you guys can see this. And I'm going to get my liner. For this one, even though the lines look a little bit thicker, I like to personally use the thinner lines for artwork like this so that I can actually get the detail in the picture. So you guys can see here, all I'm doing is drawing and tracing over. That's very simple. And I will go ahead and I will continue to trace the entire picture. If you're creative and you want to kind of add a little bit of your own taste to it, you absolutely can. If it's something that you're printing, maybe it's an image you found that you like or you want to replicate, then that is something that you can print different sizes. Like I said, I, I like using a lot of the art books. And so you can see here, this is the thinner lines. And when I'm done, and the whole thing is lined, it's gonna look something like this, except this is a different picture. So I'm gonna show you guys a different one. But here is one that I have lined. Um, if anyone's a fan of Beauty and the Beast, this is definitely one of uh, one of my favorites. And so you guys can see here, the picture was underneath it. And all I did is I lined the background here. So at this point, we get to do this fun stuff. We get to start coloring. And so in order to start coloring, you're going to need your glass paint colors. And like I said, those come in different types. So you have some that are your traditional colors here and you can see this this is more of a transparent we have some that come in these prism colors and if you look at these prism colors here you can kind of see how the color is a lot shinier and this is one of my favorite kinds these are these moon colors and so you can kind of see not only are they shiny but there is an actual effect to these that makes it um, well, you know, I'm just going to show you guys. This is a really cool one. So I'll show you guys what this looks like. So once you kind of pick out the colors that you want, and so since I have a rose here, uh, I definitely want to make sure that I have some red. And I have some options here. So I have this moon color red. And then I have a traditional glass color of red. And what I'm gonna do is to give this a little bit of texture, I'm actually gonna use both of them in different areas just to give us a little bit of a, a different feel. And it's gonna give it a little bit more variety as we are doing this. Now, before you start painting with colors, you wanna make sure that the outline that you did dried, is that right? That is right. You do wanna make sure that outline is dry. Um, and so, that's why I, I had this one prepared ahead of time because I wanted to make sure I had one that was dry. And so you can see here, like I'm kind of touching it and making sure nothing sticks to my finger, right? <laughs> um, if it is not dry completely, or um, if there are still areas of it that aren't dry, you're gonna wanna wait a little bit longer, but you should be able to tell pretty quickly um, whether or not it's dry just by, you can kind of see the shimmer to some areas if once it kind of dulls out and then also just the ability to touch it and see whether or not uh, whether or not you get any, you know, any color comes away. I am just getting, trying to find my green here. I want to have a nice color green for the leaves. Here we go. All right, so you guys can see I got a nice dark green here so we can do the leaves. Now, whether or not you want to sit there and add some of these details are completely up to you. 
Uh, you can always outline these and add in details. Um, or if you prefer to do, you know, kind of add them in more through color, you can absolutely do that. So there's a bunch of different ways to really create it and make it your own. Uh, another thing to take, you know, to, to think about is what kind of brushes you want. Um, some areas might require, require finer details, whereas others, you know, you might want to do bigger spaces. And so you can see, like, I, I like using some of these brushes that have much finer details, um, especially when I'm used, trying to get into some of these tiny little areas here. So you guys can kind of see there's some smaller areas where if I use that bigger brush, I, I'd have a lot of issues or the, or the paint might spill over versus I might use something bigger when I'm going on some of these larger areas and trying to get those colored in. And so I'm going to start and show you guys the technique that I use for coloring in the glass, the, the glass drawing we have here. So I'm going to start out with that red. And just to give you guys an idea there so you can see the red. Very pretty color. And I am going to take my brush. And what I'm doing here, because I want you guys to see this, so like I'm, I'm dipping the brush in ever so slightly. So you guys can see that. And I'm going to be adding it in little by little and kind of like dotting it in and spreading it. As you guys can see, it kind of fills in the area there, just like that. See some of these little areas here. It's literally nothing more and a tiny little dot of paint. And you can also see how it's transparent, that you can kind of see behind it. And paintings like this make it really pretty when they reflect in the light. So you can also see, um, unlike traditional painting where you would move the paint around, this is more about slowly dripping it in to where the openings are so that you're just filling that area that's between the lines. Now you might be wondering how long it takes for this to dry. And that really depends on the environment around you. On average, it could take a couple of hours, but to, just to be on the safe side, I would give it a good 24 hours just to make sure that it's completely dry. And in that amount of time, make sure that you don't put the painting upright. You want to make sure that it's laying down in the position that you painted it in and is able to completely dry. So like I mentioned, I wanted to give you guys an example of a couple of different types of paints here. So I'm going to go ahead and just finish up this flower here, and then I'm going to show you what it looks like when I use a different type at the bottom. So like I mentioned, we're going to try and give it some texture now. So I'm going to go ahead and close that one up. And so this, can I see that color there? So this isn't that shade of red as well, but this one is going to have a different texture to it. So I'm going to use that on these bell on the bottom, give the, the fallen leaves a different texture. And you can already see right away, let's see that, you're already getting some, some swirls in it. It's no longer transparent.
you'll also notice it's just just slightly thicker. But by giving these different textures, it almost gives you that, that feeling of that fallen petal versus the ones that are more vibrant. So aside from differentiating colors, textures is another way to make your painting more unique or to, or to convey different things that are happening across the artwork that you're trying to complete. I will tell you, I like to use the transparent colors for the background. I think it gives it a much uh, better feel to it. One thing I really like doing is um, using like the different moon colors uh, for if I'm doing, let's say a starry night or some type of uh, environmental background. It gives it some really nice textures. And then I like using more of the transparent yellows um, or turquoise blues when I'm doing water or sky or sun and using those to mix it in. And it really gives it a nice touch to transition between the different elements there. So there we go. And if you happen to, let's say, drop a speck of paint, like I, like I did here, you guys can kind of see that. Um, I'm just gonna go over that with, with a little teeny bit of liner later on that will help clear that up. And that will be no big deal at all. So here, we are going to use some transparent green. You guys can kind of see that there. I'm going to use a smaller brush because it's against small spots that I'm trying to get into here. And you guys can see how that little by little starts to bring all the little elements together. And what's really cool about painting this way is, you know, traditional uh, glass work where you would have to cut apart the glass into really small pieces and add on the the let you know the the lead or the the different parts of metal to it. The liners here basically do the same job that the metal would, except you don't have to cut it up or potentially cut your hands, which is uh, a drawback to the old fashioned way of doing it. And because the liner here is on, you know, it's transparent on both sides, even if you were to turn this around the other way, you would still get that same, that same uh, look on both sides. You can also kind of decide on how thick you want to layer the paint or how thin. Or the thicker you put it on, the more you're going to you're going to notice that it's going to give it darker and maybe be a slightly less transparent versus the lighter it is, the more transparent you're going to be able to get out of it. So while, while this dries a little bit, I'm going to show you guys what this looks like when it's completely done. So here is one that has been painted in. And you guys can see here, this is what the moon color ends up looking like. You guys can see the texture of it when it's done. And then what we're going to do here is here's all the grain that's kind of dried in. And like I said, sometimes you might get a spot here or there. So this is the last stage of it where we're going to touch it up. So we'll make some little touch-ups to that. In any area where 
you feel like there might be some need to it or if you wanted to draw in some more details. Here, I can add in some more details to the leaves. The other fun thing is, I mentioned you guys earlier, if you have other colors that you wanna use, I have this green one here, then I can also use the green one Go ahead and open the green one. So in, or so in order to open it, as you'll see here, simply clicking the inside, and it opens up there. There we go. And so you can also add in the details in green. And it's not going to be this bright when it's done. It's actually going to get a lot lighter and it'll end up leaving you with different textures. So I have this pink one here, and so I can also add in some textures here. I'm just gonna draw little circles on it, and squiggly lines, and when this dries, you can do it really however you want. This is just one way I like to texturize it, give it a little bit more of a feeling to it when it dries and you'll be able to see that. When it dries, it becomes completely transparent and all that's really left is the texture of it around. And so when that dries, I kind of mentioned to you guys earlier that that's one of those textures you can get. And that's going to give you this texture that you see here. So you can see here that the color then becomes transparent and gives you a nice texture to separate transparent colors versus the texturized area. So I hope you all enjoyed working on your art. I can't wait to see the creations that you guys all complete and bring forward. And I hope you all enjoy your winter break.